Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Vince, today we're going to talk about something that uh, I came up with. And uh, today's topic is uh, stuff in movies that isn't really possible, but is kind of used for dramatic effect or comedic effect, uh, or uh, just because it, it kind of adds to the action uh, of whatever the piece is. Basically, the question today is, uh, and we're going to use this to extrapolate into other sorts of things, but the, the big example I wanted to use is, is it okay that in some sci-fi movies or other things that you can hear things happen in space? And here, I thought we were going to be talking about hobos using planes instead of trains. <laughs> I think it would be planes, trains, and hobo steals. Uh, so the, the question is, um, can we still s suspend a, a, a viewer's disbelief enough when we do uh, the impossible in a movie, uh, but, but when it's something that really doesn't affect the story that much? Is it a problem just on the surface of it? That, that you can hear things happen in space, um, or is that enough to take you out of something? I think everything needs to happen within an established reality. So if you establish that something is capable hap of happening, like, like let's say you're in a musical and then people do randomly break into song. I mean, uh, how do we establish this? Well, a lot of the time we open a show with a song. So uh, if you're 30 minutes in and then suddenly everybody starts singing, that's weird. <laughs> so, and apparently it's a trope in uh, Indian cinema. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, like not uh, even musicals. Like, not apparently musicals are pretty pretty prevalent in Indian cinema. I mean, uh, uh, Lagan, which was not a bad movie, but had these weirdly inserted musical numbers that were extremely long and lots of dancing and didn't necessarily feel like they moved the plot along at all. So, uh, in fact, I have a friend that said, hey, Weird. Vince, don't, don't talk down about that movie because I'll be highly upset if you do. And I said... All right. So then, as the movie went on, I said everything wrong with it that I could possibly think of, <laughs> and and then she didn't know if I was joking or not. So, woo. <laughs> but uh, my point is, is that if you establish it as uh, as a reality, people will generally accept it. Yeah, the idea that in this universe, this is what it's like. Um, is it okay with, again, again my space example, is it okay with something like that where it's, say, say science fiction? Because, of course, in Star Trek, for instance, you can hear things blow up in space. When you, you, it's a show where there are explosions, and Star, Star Wars is that way, too. You know, you know the things where, where there are explosions, and so we want to hear them, because otherwise we'd just be looking at something something exploding, so so it's it's just part of the atmosphere and ambiance of the thing. Um, but if, like, the rest of it is generally making the attempt, even when it fails, um, of being scientific scientifically accurate, you know, um, or at least trying to build on real science, uh, is does it immediately discredit the thing as a credible science thing if you have, like, the sounds of explosions and things like that in space? Um, I generally think not. I think it's okay. Again, again, kind of consistency is key. But then I think about things like Battlestar Galactica, where sometimes you can hear the explosions and sometimes you can't. And yet it never bothered me in that show. You know, I kind of wonder if maybe there isn't like a vantage point type thing. Like uh, maybe if you're standing in an area with atmosphere, you will be able to hear something. Maybe not the explosion, but uh, the resulting shock waves or something. Like uh, maybe there's this like enormous rattle or something that happens when you're in a ship adjacent to an exploding ship. But do you think when they're putting those together, that there's really that much thought behind it? Because I don't. No. And uh, personally... But it doesn't take you out. As a viewer, I don't necessarily care. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, I can accept it that somebody could potentially hear this thing do something, even if it's not the traditional exploding sound. But I'm okay with it even usually... Again, just depending on what it is and how consistent it is, because this is another one of those depends kind of topics, right? Like it, it really, it's a case by case basis. It really depends on what it is, I think. But, um, but, but like, but like even even less just like could a person hear something? Not even putting myself in in, in the shoes there. I can kind of to a degree get on board with creative license. Yeah, I mean, like for example, I don't know if this exists in a movie. I'm sure it does. But uh, let's say somebody is sucked out into space. Oh my God! Yeah, and, sure. Uh, and it's silent. It happens in Star Trek. It happens. In, doesn't it happen in Aliens? I'm sure. It but happens I mean, yeah. At some point. There's, there's, there's. I know there's an alien sucked out, but uh, 
Anywho. Hey, I'm sorry, go ahead. So uh, so somebody, let's say somebody gets sucked out of an airlock and they're floating through space and then uh, uh, let's say there's the camera here and the guy comes floating by and you hear the guy going, ah. I say there's creative license there. I say there's reason to do it because uh, if you can use the example of nobody's necessarily hearing it, but uh, you're with the character so you can hear it, uh, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I kind of like that because otherwise you're just looking at somebody floating, and especially if you don't get a close-up on their face, you don't know if they're shouting or anything. Or maybe they just look terrified. Maybe they're not even shouting. So uh, it gives you a little bit of reality, a little bit of insight into the character if you have something like that. Now, that being said, uh, let's say you're in a ship somewhere and uh, this guy gets sucked out of an airlock and then screams, and you're like, Hark! I hear Billy Bob screaming. Yeah. And now, first of all, who would invite Billy Bob into uh, uh, you know a spaceship? Mainly because Thornton had to build one. So <laughs> there, there is like three levels to that joke. <laughs> if you appreciated any of that, thank you. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, well done. But my point, thank you. My point still stands. That uh, if somebody goes, oh, I can hear that. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Why? Because we don't necessarily need to hear a ship exploding. You know, um, I, this is something I think about a lot in things, and it's it's really a, a curiosity for me. Uh, what in a movie is for the audience's benefit, and what do the characters actually see and hear? You know, how many times have you seen something in a movie or, or in a TV show or something where you've where you've gone? I'm trying to think of a good example, but but where you've gone? I don't know what they're hearing versus what I'm hearing. You know you what know, I mean? Like, there are, there are times where, where, where it, it does seem to be completely for the audience's benefit. There is a... Uh, I mean, we have certain things that can be said here. Like, for example, uh, uh, if you do what Kevin Wilmot calls a dumb show and have two characters talk to each other, but the audience can't hear it, then you can conceal information from someone. That's useful. Yeah, yeah, sure. If, uh, There's a lot of plays written like that. You can do this misdirection That's what where... The, the, the aside, that is what that is. The, the, the aside. Yeah. The dumb the, show, the otherwise known as the aside. No, 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 I just mean that, that the, 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 the dumb show, I guess, would be the whole package, but I just mean that that, that mechanic mm. is just the aside, where, like, like, like Shakespeare does it all the time. You know, Indeed. Where, like, that's not even a dumb show, it's just Shakespeare does it, where pe people people are talking to each other. Clearly there are people standing right here that ought to be able to hear what they're hearing, but because the, the, the script says oh, they can't hear it now, now they can hear it, that's an aside. So, uh, the dumb show being that the audience can't even hear what they're saying. It's just two guys talking, oh. you know there's a transfer of ideas. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I wasn't following you. Go ahead. Now, uh, on the other hand, what he just des described <laughs> is an entirely useful thing because then you yeah. can give the information to the audience and then, and then the audience knows more than uh, what even perhaps your narrator does. Yeah, right. So uh, then you have uh, uh, maybe information being given that's false so I'm not sure what this has to do with screaming in space, but, but it's, I like interesting. It. I think it's interesting. Yeah, it, the, the thing is, it's doing what a um, what a narrator can do, be it third person, be it omniscient, be it limited, whatever it is, be it first person, whatever it is. It's doing what sometimes you have to find. I hate to call them cheats, but you have to find find devices to sometimes do things that you need in a narrative that you could do if it was written, well, that you can't do when it's spoken. Right, and 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 that's and that's what those things do because you wouldn't need asides in just a short story. You would just right. have the narrator give you that, give you that information, whatever whatever it is that the audience need that the audience needs. And um, a uh, and if it's first person and you're going to be given things that you that you can't be sure if you can believe it or not, believe it or, or, or not, that's just a uh, unreliable narrator. Yeah, like you know, if a play were to happen in space and then we hear an astronaut talking. Mm -hmm. We're going to accept that. Why? Because otherwise you're just watching a dude pretend to float around. Uh, so, here Yeah, but then but then he's going to have a helmet on because he's in space. Otherwise he could breathe in space and then we're in a Superman 4 territory. And um, you can... Uh, <laughs> and, and we assume that we can hear him because we're not really there. We're, we're with him. Right. He's talking to himself and the audience is hearing it. I mean, the audience in, in, a, in, a, in something... You have to keep in mind that the audience is never supposed to actually be there. We're we're always eavesdropping most of the time. Almost always we are eavesdropping, right? So we are always in places we 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 aren't invited. We're in people's bathrooms and we're in people's cars with them, and you know you know we're always where we're not invited. 
You know, I would kind of like to see uh, a comedy that happens in space. I'd like to have two people talking to each other and neither of them can hear what the other one's saying. That might be kind of fun. Just, uh, You'd have to come up with a conceit, or not not a conceit, but like um, there, there would have to be some kind of a contrivance because uh, usually you in, in spacesuits you'd have some kind of radio. Indeed. I mean, like... Yeah, you uh, can break the radio and then, yeah. Like, uh, let's let's say that uh, the... the Oh, my goodness. Well, let's call him Plot Device from Superman 4. I couldn't who, remember who we were talking about. couldn't remember the name of the big bad... Uh, Just Nuclear Man? Yeah, Nuclear yeah, Man. Nuclear I want to say Radioactive Man, but I'm like, no, that's from The Simpsons. Who's the other guy? So Nuclear that Man. movie would have been so much better with Radioactive Man. Yeah. Uh, it would have been a better movie had it not existed. But, so... <laughs> it's like, that was scathing. That doesn't, that doesn't make doesn't sense. doesn't make sense. Your face would be a better movie if that movie didn't exist. I can't think of anything that would be better by not existing, because we wouldn't even know it existed in the first place. Well, you wouldn't feel so bad about it then, would you? No. Indeed. So, so let's say Superman and uh, and Nuclear Man were trying to talk to each other. Let's say Nuclear Man had an ability to actually speak to somebody as opposed to go. And in fact, that, that in those movies that happens, you see people talking to each other on the moon that aren't wearing helmets. Like even if even if I can buy that, like Ursa and Zod don't need to breathe on the moon, they shouldn't be able to communicate with each other or the or the spacemen. Exactly. So they can just shout at each other. I want you over there. I have no idea what you're saying. Don't disobey me. I'm not disobeying you. <laughs> Kneel before me. Excuse me? <laughs> Bringing everything... I see you are practicing worship thing things that fly. Uh, so, <laughs> if... um. If, Taking this back around to what we were talking about then, let's use that example because it's cool. I love Superman 2, and um, and uh, yet that is hard to believe because we're in a world that, by and large, things seem to work the way they do in the real world. By and large. Some things don't. Um, again, I always have questions about Superman's powers and that and why he suddenly gets powers he didn't have before. Those sorts of things. But... but if you if you accept at least okay so in this version Kryptonians have telekinesis beams, um, then uh, then things like that are going to take me out because for the most part well the spacemen need suits to breathe so they're at least using some real science and then uh, but then y you have this kind of like breaking the internal logic of the piece things where you have Ursa talking to the spaceman and he can hear her that's weird so like. I think that sort of thing is still a problem, and it just won't ruin a whole movie to me if the movie is good. You know what I mean? That yeah. doesn't... Those those sorts of things don't make a movie bad to me, unless it's such an enormous plot point, the whole thing falls apart. You know what I mean? Like, if just the entire thing were to fall apart because of something like that. So I guess the question I have for you, Vince, is do we label... Do we, do we call those things... It's it's just a matter of what do we call them, and and and, and it's difficult sometimes to decide w what terminology is too scathing or, or if it's if it's appropriate. Um, something like that. Is it a is it a nitpick, or is it a genuine concern? If it's a nitpick, it doesn't matter at all. If it's a genuine concern, it might not ruin the movie, but another draft they could have cleaned that up. I'm going to call something like that the second thing. You know. I would say that it really depends on how prevalent it is within the film. Itself, oh, okay, all right. Or, or the short story or whatever. So if you keep reading or watching things that uh, consistently throughout the piece make a mistake that should have easily, you know, just as long as you have a basic That's understanding a of point. science, yeah. then uh, then it's not a nitpick anymore. It's a then consistent it's a problem. problem, yeah. But uh, if it happens once and you go, ah, oh, that's lame, then you can move on. Uh, you're abs You know what? I'm going to concede to that point. You're absolutely right. Because in Superman 2, it never comes up again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying it, it never <laughs> comes up again. It's not a, it's a, it's a, it's a non-issue after that. It's just that one time you're like, really? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's for me, it would be something that would make me roll my eyes and I wouldn't be able to give a movie a perfect score because, like, how do you not know that? Yeah. But, uh, I mean, like, I have a tough time, this isn't a physics thing, but I have a tough time with, like, the, the giant Superman plastic ass. Why? Because it's stupid. Just because it's 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 kind it's kind of dumb. Why does oh, he, plastic ass? Why does he have that? Okay. Yeah. Why 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 does why does he have the giant plastic ass? Um, but it's more of it, it. It doesn't ruin the movie or even drag the entire thing down because at least that's not how he stopped Zod. Like it, like if the whole movie ended with I wrapped Zod up in a giant in a giant fruit roll up <laughs> and then put him in a closet and the movie's over, then that might elevate well beyond nitpick. Well, I you mean, know, that, it was just another uh, product placement, so that was saran wrap, right? <laughs>
So. <laughs> no, it was fruit roll up. It was it was cherry and um, <laughs> cherry and lemon. It was together. cherry and lemon. Yeah, exactly. Because everybody loves cherry and lemon <laughs> together. Same fruit roll up. See, that's why it slowed him down because nobody likes it. And he's like, "That's gross. Why would you why would you throw that at me?" I don't know. They paid me. But as far as stuff like the <laughs> like, like like the noise in space. Um, I think most of the time, it's not it's a it's a non-issue because it's not part of the story. It's an it's an aesthetic. It's a visual or audio or auditory aesthetic thing. Right. And again, being in a character's head's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But uh, being in a character's head and other people can hear it. I mean, you cannot establish that there is a reality that people like. I just I can't believe that anything normal would happen once you've established that nothing normal hack or once you've established that things abnormal that are unexplained can happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think cons- I think you need consistency. Well, I think you almost always need consistency. But I mean, like, <laughs> when, when it, when it's, when it, again, if it's part of the story, like, if they were to make a plot point out of, in this universe, we were able to hear something, we, we can hear things in space. For instance, if somebody in a spacesuit was out in space and they heard something and then the ship decided to go investigate, that's now part of the story. And we would just have to accept or decide not to accept that in that reality that guy could hear that without sensors or anything like that. But if it's simply in Star Trek when the ships explode, we can hear it. You know, diehard purists that want everything to be exactly scientifically accurate, they might wish that the aesthetic wasn't that way, but it's not affecting the story. Right. And, you know, I would also say that there has to be some kind of either thematic... Or just a reason for doing it. I mean, if you're, if the reason but you're doing it, but that's not even thematic with Star Trek. It's just simply, you know, um, we we want to hear the explosions. Well, fair enough. And but, uh, that that's never really bugged me that much. But I mean, uh, I feel like there has to be a reason for doing it. Cause and uh, you know what? It, when it happens, I'm sorry. Let me say this. When it happens in Battlestar, um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no, I'm I'm interested now. Go for it. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Wait, when it when it happens in Battlestar, I don't even think it's so much we're trying to be realistic so we can't hear the explosions because sometimes you can hear them. So I think that they try to add emotional weight to the places where you can't hear it. So that's also for for a um, for like a mood thing. Right. I mean. Uh- if it adds something to a scene, I mean, I think that no, that's fine. I think if you add something to a scene, that's that's great. But I also feel like there has to be some kind of driving logic to the things that you do within your show. Or, okay, I'm gonna or whatever. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it up. Are you ready? Sure. Let's talk about slow motion. Ah! No, let's do it. All right, fine. Because this is totally in this. Yeah. Let's let's end this with slow motion. All okay. right. Um, because because what? <laughs> I, I said it. We're going to end it with slow mo. So, um. I count two times of Vincent Bullet Time. So, <laughs> when. When I. Uh, when slow motion is used, it's always a. Um. It's always an aesthetic thing, right? Yeah. Like, like, like. Almost never, except for when you have Bullet Time or something like that, where, where the slow motion is actually really physically happening, where a person is moving slowly. Like, like, um, like what I mean is, like, in the Matrix, the Bullet Time is not, we're seeing it in slow motion. It's actually, in, it, it, that person is actually moving slower now. And so we're watching them moving slower. Um, you know what I mean? Because we're experiencing it. They're not actually moving slower, but we're experiencing time the way they are. And so it makes sense to do it that way because we're in their head and we're experiencing time the way they are. But usually it's 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 more of a um of more of a cre- again, creative license thing. Uh, we've decided to show to slow down the action now to um, either show you pieces of it that you couldn't have seen if we did it in real time or just to be cool and edgy looking. Or to um, or to uh, feel emotional resonance with the person that's doing it at the time. So, um, like, when is this okay and when is it not? Because I know often slow motion drives you crazy. Do you always hate it? No. Okay. All right. Now here's the deal. Uh, I like the reason we the reason Cap's like, well, let's bring it up now. Is uh, Watchmen. He and I have had arguments largely about uh, Zack Snyder's work. Are we gonna still have the same argument when we're like fifty? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but, uh, it's been four years. I'll be an old man, and be like, you like slow motion way too much, <laughs> and I think the opening of Watchmen is great because it looks like comic panel. And then Vince is like, quit bringing up the comic panels. I don't care well, about the comic panels. I mean, here's the deal. I think we should have this entire argument like we're 75. <laughs> I think that, well, frankly, frankly, Bring like me the my medicine. So, 
we had a viewer point out that I was like, frankly, I think the Punisher. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Yeah, that was great. But uh, somebody was like, I can't believe nobody. I can't believe uh, uh, Captain Ch didn't catch that. I was like, yeah, I didn't catch that at all. I, as I said it, I was wondering if anybody's going to catch it anyway. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I, I forget the viewer. Blue Red, maybe. Anywho, I don't remember the video. Was I it the top know. twenty-one combo movies? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Moving on. So, uh, <laughs> in slow motion, motion, I feel like slow motion ought to highlight something that you wanted to highlight. That's what I think. Okay. So, I think, you think it has to happen when you couldn't do it any other way? Uh, sure. Like flashbacks. I flashbacks. I mean, a flashbacks is another, or flashbacks is another thing. Flashbacks are another thing. You have to use it sparingly, in my opinion, because yeah. if you flood a movie with them, they become. It's like saying the f word every five seconds. I mean, uh, I would say it's let's intrusive. hear it. profanity, flashbacks, and uh, slow motion. And slow motion. These things all have alternatives to them. And strobe lights. That uh, <laughs> and backlight, but. Uh, <laughs> Strobe backlight. You should only use backlighting when you're trying to make someone look really dr dramatic and like they're out of the 70s. Now, uh, I don't think that uh, I don't think that slow motion should be used to highlight uh, punches and things of that kind. I think that strobe or strobe lights. <laughs> 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 I think that slow motion ought to be used to highlight significant punches. I feel like, uh, like for example... Oh, where do you draw the line, though? Well, like, isn't that somewhat subjective? And you know what? I wouldn't mind slow motion being used like pepper. I mean, uh, I mean, again, you use a spice too much, you have something that's uh, un inedible. So you're not saying Watchmen did, did. You're not saying that Watchmen shouldn't have done it. You're saying yeah. Watchmen did it too many times. I'm not saying Watchmen should not have used slow motion. I'm saying that Watchmen used too much slow motion. Okay, now I'm going to go here because I love this argument. We've never finished it, and I have a lot of fun with it. Let me ask you this, okay? Um, one of the things I loved about the slow motion in Watchmen. Well, really, okay. This was the thing I liked about the slow motion in Watchmen. Um, I liked the places of it, and the rest of it just didn't bother me. It didn't hit me out like it did you. Um, the places I liked it were mostly when um, it was like an iconic comic book panel where he wanted you, he, he wanted to be able to do that panel everybody knows and let us look at it for a minute. And if he hadn't slowed down on it, we wouldn't have captured it. We wouldn't have been able to see it. Mm -hmm. So, like, if they had only done it in those points, would you have appreciated it for that, or do you think he that was too gimmicky and he shouldn't have even done, gone that far? Well, I'll say this. The... Uh the comic book fan in me uh, saw some of those things, like you know, especially the heart or the heart, the, the smiley face with blood on it. I'm thinking I mean, specifically that, and and right before it, where he's where he's falling out of the window. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's an iconic panel. And also falling out of the window, regardless of whether or not it's an iconic panel, is a significant moment. So if he just gets thrown out a window and falls and dies, uh, we go, wow, that was quick. Yeah. Uh, this highlights a moment where we need to have resonance. We have a, we, slow motion should give you a moment to appreciate what is happening right now. Yeah. As a to just whoa, dude, look at that. Also, I think that sometimes um, uh, people experience moments faster or slower mm. than other periods. So if you were getting thrown out a window and you thought you might be, be uh, falling to your death, that th that moment might slow down for you. And so right. that's capturing. We're, we're, we're at that point in the comedian's head, and that's capturing how 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 slow the moment is moving. You know, for that character. I mean, exactly. And uh, I guess. To so you're not saying it never worked. No, I'm okay. not saying that uh, they shouldn't have used any slow motion. I'm saying that Zack, Zack Snyder uses it like a crutch. Yeah. And uh, that's why I applauded his uh, utter lack of it in uh, in Man of Steel. Now, he was just trying to make you happy. Yeah, that's what it was. He was like, I'm going to make that guy from Geek Evolution really happy when I make this movie. But uh, He was you, on Snyder. pins and needles waiting for, you, for, uh, for your review for that. Which, uh, I mean, that being said, and I, I do agree with your statement that uh, some slow motion might have been beneficial. Okay. And in fact, I think that uh, if they had used some slow motion that would have given them an alternative to some of the things they did do that was largely we nonsense. Man of Steel? Man, yeah, Man yeah. of Steel. Uh, I mean... Uh, what, what, what was nonsense? Uh, Superman taking the fight to the center of Smallville didn't make any sense. Okay. That's... That's the... Like, I'm not saying that collateral damage that happened in... Uh, in Metropolis made no sense. They just needed to give more time to appreciate. Had they used slow motion, Superman, you would have really appreciated Superman's uh, recognizing that he has to make one of two choices. As it stands, he just goes and makes a choice. Yeah. So had but they he used does slow motion, feel they could like he could have kept it from going to the to, to, to the main part of Smallville. And you know what I yeah, think would have right. been neat is uh, had they used slow Plus motion. Plus they should have done a slow motion when we went through the IHOP and blew it up just because I could have laughed it no longer. <laughs> 
they use slow motion, I mean, uh, they could have shown Superman uh, dragging uh, Zod, you know, hitting Zod, taking him to an entirely different part, and then Zod directed... Wait, did he hit Zod and then take him to the center of Smallville, or was it one of the henchmen? Anyway, I whatever. don't remember. The Kryptonian. I've seen it twice. The other Kryptonian that he hits and he takes to the center of Smallville. Uh, if he had taken him into the air, and then that guy could have, uh, they could have used a little slow motion to, like, his eyes move, see Smallville, and then yeah. throw him back. Okay. I mean, uh, s slow motion is a tool to highlight something that your audience needs to see that would otherwise miss. Okay. Okay. Or uh, it's highlighting something that the audience needs to see that's significant thematically, even if it's not, or, or dramatically, even if it's not significant to the plot. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, things that, the, the slow motion that happened in The Matrix may have been obnoxious to some people, but it needed to happen because this is what the story is essentially about. Mm -hmm. And then in uh, 300, it's yeah. about just looking cool, so it didn't bother me in 300 because 300 is largely void of plot. So, well, no, it has plot, but it's largely void of character. It's not character-driven, yeah. yeah. It's not character-driven, and there's really no character progression or whatever, character growth. Uh, so when they use slow motion in that, I didn't care because I wasn't getting anything else out of it. But okay. uh, when you have a, a beast like Watchmen, there are things that are significant in it. Because, first of all, it's, it has social commentary inherent within the piece trying to remake what was uh, made in the original format. Mm -hmm. So when you turn it into a movie, if you make it about being pretty, then you have uh, largely discredited the creature that you are, you've tried to interpret. Yeah. Because you said, well, this is about what it looks like. And, uh, and where we disagree is, is just how much of it was about just being pretty and how much of it actually actually worked. Exactly. And for me, it was just a matter of, yeah, and, and, and I feel like that's very subjective, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean I, I, for, for, for me, it was like, well, I still got all of the social commentary and the character and the characterization and um, the, the, the character parallels and all the things I was looking for um, out of it, even besides that, and so it was communicating it okay for me, so I didn't feel like it was in my way, and therefore I didn't mind it. Yeah, I just I found it distasteful. I found it like they were taking up. I find you distasteful. I find your face distasteful. You should stop rubbing nasty stuff on your face. <laughs> but so it's just a little thing. <laughs> but uh, where was I going distasteful. with this? Your Facebook is distasteful. You should stop putting distasteful crap on your Facebook. So <laughs> that wasn't me. Oh yeah, you, you put those links there. It was all you. Yeah, whatever. Stop putting porn on my Facebook. <laughs> I think you might get kicked for that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why they... It's all your fault. That's why they won't let me on Facebook anymore. Ah, you, ah, you broke ah. into my account and you put, you put porn on my Facebook. Take that, Cap. God, why do, you, why do you do stuff like that? Your face is porn. You know, there's a, there's a practical joke. There's a difference between putting a cow up on the second story of your high school and putting porn on my Facebook. You've been reading too many dirty Facebooks. It actually happened in my high school. Oh. Somebody, somebody brought in a cow. Put it on the roof? And put it on the... Our high school had two levels. Somebody put it on the second level where I couldn't go down the stairs. That's awesome. <laughs> well, that's not the word I would use, but in hindsight, it's pretty funny. Yeah! So... <laughs> what were we talking about? That's 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 uh, that's always my strategy for the uh, Watchmen argument. I deflect you so that you forget what you're talking about, and then oh. I go, I won. I'll always hop on a joke. Oh, I, I mean, essentially, my point with the Watchmen is that Zack Snyder made some uh, directorial choices that are preventing it from being high art. So it took something that was high art and then made it into a popcorn movie. And uh, I think you. Well, there I don't are say elements. You can do both, but I no, feel like no, it can I think be you can do both. Entertaining and yeah. I think you can do both, but I also think that there's a, there's a line what to watch. Your choices need to make but sense. But what was he losing by doing that stuff? He was losing the interpretation of the material. Really? That's what I think. And uh, I. Wow. Think we need to go through that scene by scene together. Fair I enough. think at some point this needs to happen, and I think we need to record it, and I think it would be amazing. I mean, I feel like. Uh, this is illustrated by the fact that... Are you game for that? Sure. I think one of these days that needs to happen. I don't think that Zack Snyder didn't get the material. Oh, no, I think he absolutely did. I just think that Zack Snyder uh, either discounts or discredits his audience by saying, uh, well, they won't like it if their villain looks too much like a superhero, so let's make him look like a villain. Okay, I completely agree with that point. Uh, no, 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 you're absolutely right on that point. Yeah. They yeah. won't like it if... Uh, I didn't like Ozymandias' costume. Yeah, which Ozymandias... You know, he wasn't anything. He wasn't necessarily contrary he, to the paper. He was my biggest problem page. with that. Yeah, no, absolutely, I'm with you there. But I just feel like stylistically, Zack Snyder says we need to do things in a certain way. Now, maybe that's maybe Zack Snyder is uh, 
not entirely unlike, say, uh, Tim Burton. No, bear with me. And the fact that uh, a studio gets a hold of what he of, of what he gets famous for, and then forces it down his throat. Now you did the slow motion thing, Zach. Now what we want you to do is the slow motion thing again. Oh, uh, you know, we we want you, Jim Carrey, to play the Riddler, but we don't want you to be the Riddler. We want you to be uh, Ace Ventura as the Riddler. In the ca- that's a great point. In, in in the case of Zack Snyder, I really get the sense, for at least from his commentary, uh, that he kind of had free reign on that project. So, eh, fair enough. <laughs> that's just it's that's my issue with it. I, yeah, sure. I think it's a less artistic choice. I do. Huh. All right. Well. Anyway. Um. I. 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 I Watch for more of this later eventually, probably, because I don't think... It's been four years, and I still don't think this argument is done. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just enjoy having it. Anyway, um, Vince, we are... Um, l- let's go ahead and go on to rants now. And um, w- what we're doing, folks, is uh, we're changing up the format of Geeks Not Nerds a little bit. We used to do uh, Gene in the Podcast, and Gene in the Podcast has largely become commentaries now. And Vince and I uh, haven't done podcasts lately because we just haven't uh, had time when we get together to do podcasts and Geeks Not Nerds. And, and so, our Geeks Not Nerds they, videos are becoming podcast they, they, length. Yeah, they've become podcast length. We don't really worry so much about time anymore. We've decided that uh, for each topic we do, we might as well just uh, talk till we're done and really get the really get the, the, the topic the topic out and talk till we're finished. And then, of course, let the uh, the, the uh, conversation continue in the comments. Um, so what we've decided to do now is basically turn Geeks Not Nerds into what the podcast used to be but on camera. The only difference that means for you folks is that we're adding rants back. And some folks have been asking us to do this lately. Um, People have been saying, oh man, we missed the rants at the end of the podcast. So now Geeks Not Nerds will be ending with rants. And uh, rants were always traditionally two-minute rants. Um, I don't really keep track of the time, but we'll keep them short. We never really We never really did. We just called two-minute rants sounded better than rants. Anyway, Vince, uh, would you like to go first? Sure. Okay, what would you like to rant about today? Go All ahead. All right. So here's my rant. <laughs> uh, I, I find it kind of obnoxious when uh, movies or TV shows or whatever don't let their characters ever be injured. If their characters are 100% invincible, now, now granted, if their characters are invincible, <laughs> it's fine, but you have to establish that they are. And then, and then conversely, if you establish that your character is invincible and then they're hurt by easy crap, that's annoying too. Is that why you don't like Sin City? Well, there's lots of reasons I don't like Sin City. Oh, okay. But okay. that's because that movie's all style and less substance. But anywho. We could argue about that, too. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. Sorry, go ahead. But, so, uh... It's pick fights today on Geek Geekvolution. Like, for example... Like, for example... <laughs> picking a fight? That's winning a fight. <laughs> Why are you bigger than me? Stop winning! But, uh, for example, uh, a movie. That's always how the Watchmen debate ends, by the way. Stop hitting me. Vince Vince jumps on Captain Logan. I always lose because he's bigger than me. Yeah, well, you forgot the most important argument of all my fist. (laughs) Do you want to play? Mm hmm. So, so, uh, like, like for example, and here's a TV show that does it well uh, Cowboy Bebop. His kid, the, char- the main character is not invincible. He, he frequently gets messed up. Why? Because he's doing a hazardous job. But you can't have somebody go out time and time again and not suffer any consequences. And uh, you can't have everybody end with this laughing ending. Well, I'm glad we made it out of that scrape of life. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but, uh, so that's my rant. It annoys me when people do that, when, when creators do that. There are choices that make sense. If I tell you what, here, here's what it is. If uh, if you took your characters and put them in situations that uh, ob- obeyed the established reality, then you wouldn't have that problem. Why? And you also have to be clever. You have to make your main character uh, smart enough to do the thing that they're doing. So you have to be as smart as your character. Hmm. Which that's not necessarily true. You don't have to have all the science, no, sciencey that, stuff like Reed Richards. That's not or true. Whatever. But you have to make it believable. But you have to. You basically have to trick the audience into thinking that you're that you you know everything that's in your character's head. I think yeah. I, I, I really think that you know if you're writing a scientist or a therapist, therapist, <laughs> or or you're writing because um, because now now I'm now I'm drawing attention to myself and going I don't know if I did that um, <laughs> with, with my novel. Um, <laughs> but I uh, but but you know or uh, or or a doctor or, you know whatever it is um, you know. You might not know everything that that character would know, but you have to make us think that that, yeah. that that character has all that in their head. Just like an actor pretending to be 
um, say, like, like a cop or something, um, you know, we assume, watching them, if they're a great actor, that that character has all that knowledge up in their head, but they, but they don't. Like, there's a movie... They don't know everything. I forget the name of this movie. I, for the life of me, I have no idea what it is. But it stars James Woods and Michael J. Fox. And Michael, Michael J. Fox... J. Fox. <laughs> Fox. Michael J. Fox. From Boston. So, uh, so... He has a new show coming out. <laughs> Did you know that? He does. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited. And it has the chick from, uh... From, uh, Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. So, uh... I like her. Well, anyway. she had to make sure she had, she had more work after that show, right? Yeah. So, uh, so this movie is, is largely Michael J. Fox is an actor, and he's following around, uh, Woods, who is a... Mm, mm, cop almost said movie star. I was like, that's the same thing. A movie cop. Star. So it's just it's just looking at uh, at, at a cop. This is an actor following around a cop so he can learn to act more like a cop. And the entire oh, movie cool. is about uh, you don't know what it's like to be a cop. You are way over the top. What you have in your head is a film version of a cop. And then as the movie progresses, uh, what they give you is a film version of a cop followed around by an actor studying around what's supposed to be a real cop, but he does all this action-y stuff that Sylvester Stallone... Or so whoever. you're saying the whole thing doesn't work? The whole thing in concept doesn't work, oh, because wow. at the end of it, he's like, well, you know what it's like to be a real cop now? <laughs> what? Where's the paperwork? Where's the endless sitting around waiting for, you know... Well, here's the deal. There's a movie that does this a little bit better. It's called Showtime. Uh, and essentially what it is is that uh, they acknowledge the fact that uh, the cop, Robert De Niro, gets caught up in uh, what's a, what, it, what ends up being a bigger issue than what cops tend to deal with. And uh, so it becomes a little more action-y. And, uh, I mean, Eddie Murphy is an actor who is, uh, is, a, is a cop that's not a very good cop. And I don't necessarily know that his character is a very good actor, but uh, he's supposed to be. So they do this reality show about them. And uh, I think it's neat that, uh, that they acknowledge the fact that it becomes... Uh, it's almost like uh, where do you point... Or if where you point the camera, are things realistic anymore? Or however you say that old thing that we talked about in that one video. Where, <laughs> what are you talking about? Mise-en-scene? No? Uh, where uh, if, there's a, if there's a camera on you, are you acting natural? Oh, yes, yes, right. So, I, uh, know, I don't know there was a term for it, but yeah. It's, it's almost like uh, you know they started filming a reality show about cops, and it ended up being uh, more cinematic by nature of being filmed. So yeah. I'm not saying it's a particularly more, smart movie. more manufactured. I'm just saying they acknowledge the fact that they did some weird stuff. I'm like, grr. Anyway, that's two or three rants in one. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's par for the course for you. Um, and also your mother. Sometimes with rants, I hear your your, your Facebook your Facebook. Um, <laughs> sometimes on rants, uh, I like to make fun of myself. And uh, in, instead of ranting about something that annoys me, I'm going to rant about something that annoys me because I annoyed myself. Um, basically, I uh, sometimes I, I find it irritating when like you uh, you, you have something from your childhood and you loved it and you go through your whole life and you think you understand it and then you grow up and you see it again and this isn't the thing where you see it and it doesn't hold up that's also annoying but when you see it and you thought you knew what it was like and you understood it and then the whole thing becomes different what you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking in vague abstractions, but 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 what's worse? I have an example for. After oh, go yours. ahead. No, go ahead. So, well, I mean, this isn't even about a TV show. Okay. But, uh, uh, if I may be lewd without using profanity. Yeah, I, I'd love to see you try. Uh, I never understood when I was a kid. People always used the term "love handles" around me. I oh, didn't know what that meant. And I had no idea what that meant. And then one day, in around about my twenties, I, I hadn't thought about it in a long time, and I said the word "love handles," and I went. Oh my oh. God! Is that oh. what that means? That's what that is. And then I think it was my dad sitting next to me. And he just started laughing. I was. Um, what's even worse than that is when you see the thing when you grow up and you still don't pick up on it, and your buddy Vince comes over, <laughs> and your buddy Vince, you know, because everybody's got a buddy Vince, and your buddy Vince comes over, and your buddy Vince is like is like talking to you about um, Winnie the Pooh. 
And uh, we've all had this experience. Yeah, everybody's your, talked about your, Winnie the Pooh. Your buddy Vince is talking to you about Winnie the Pooh, and Eeyore comes up, and um, you're like, uh, you're like, I always liked Eeyore, and and, and Vince um, is like, I would never really care that much about Eeyore, and I'm like, yeah, but the cool thing about Eeyore is that he's like a stuffed animal, right? And he he loses his tail. His tail's not really like 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 a like a part of him, but he's got to have it all the time, and it just it's kind of weird and quirky, and um, and he's he's always trying to find it, and then Vince says, um, well. Well, it's like uh, it's like it, 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 it's because it's like pin the tail on the donkey. Twenty nine years old, I never oh. thought of that. <laughs> I knew Eeyore was a donkey, and I knew people had to pin the tail on him, and it never occurred to me that there was an association. Well, you know, I, I think that's forgivable, largely. I mean, it happens. I have those moments all the time where I'm like, oh, that's that's from my childhood, and I, and I never I never made the connection. I can't believe I never put those two things together. Anyway, um, that's not a that, that's 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 not really a, a a rant rant like I hate things so much as I, I but but I hate that phenomenon. You in, know what I mean? In contrast, yeah. I've I've pretty much always had that thought about Eeyore, so that's kind of funny. I just had never thought of that. I was like, oh, they pin the tail. On the I love donkey. Tigger though. I love Tigger. Tigger's great. You know, I sometimes I laugh like Tigger. It's true. Tigger has almost a Cesar Romero Joker laugh. Yeah, I never thought about that. Yeah, I, I, I always thought of that. Well, uh, everybody, thanks as always for watching Geeks Not Nerds. Uh, let us know what you think about the uh, is it a problem if uh, I, I, you can hear noises in space question. And also, if there's something you'd like us to talk about in a future video, leave that in the comments as well. We'll see you again next time. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince, reminding you to support your local comic book store. See you later.